Hey everybody, uh, Mtech here with my new invention, the Mal Effect Generator. And it's similar to a Tesla coil and something Don Smith would have made. So basically what happens here is it's a perfectly proportioned Tesla coil, almost perfectly built magnifying transmitter, and the output power is much, much greater than the input. We're almost at five times the output power than the input. And the reason that occurs is because we're varying capacitance with respect to time in the circuitry. And it's basically siphoning extra electricity out of the earth ground. So here's the modified Slayer circuit. It uses negative resistance avalanche diodes I got from Newark Electronics, N-E-W-A-R-K, and this resident capacitor on the L1 greatly improved my output. So what happens is the system oscillates, and when the field collapses, the excess power in the L1 goes through a full bridge rectifier, Scotty diodes, rated for, I believe these are 20 amps, 180 volts, at rated for high frequency and they can absolutely handle the frequency that's coming out of here <clears throat> and we can run it directly off that output the reason we do that we run it through the rectifiers is so we don't detune the L1 <clears throat> and just in case it wasn't pure enough DC it goes through a it goes through a RF to DC board. Absolutely no doubt what, what's coming out of here is pure DC. And I'll demonstrate the over unity effect. I just run it off of my variable DC power supply, 0 to 60 volts, up to 5 amps. We don't run it at anywhere near full power. We really only need the voltage coming off of it with a little bit of current to. We're basically just paying for switching, and the earth is what runs the loads. Here's just a pile of my random wireless receiver lights. Um, they're just two diodes back-to-back -back with an LED jumbo. That's a blown transistor over there. Again, there's the circuit. Special avalanche diodes for negative resistance. The resident capacitor. And the diodes that come off right off the L1 here are to prevent detuning. So, <clears throat> anyway, I'll turn the system on. Get the meter ready. Turn the system on. It's on. As you see, I can take this wireless receiver light, touch it to anything metal nearby, and it will light up very brightly. That's the radiant energy effect. <clears throat> And uh, to my knowledge, no other system in the world can do that. Or if it does, they're keeping it hidden somewhere. So, this is just the LED receiver circuitry. As you can see it. I can touch this to anything metal, even the weirdest things, and it will light. And here's the absolute impressive range this thing has. It's about seven feet. And this thing that sits next to it is just an earth grounded receiver, completely wireless. Um, I'm not sure why, but just having a wirelessly earth grounded receiver coil that sits next to the uh, transmitter greatly increases the radiant energy effect. As you can see, I can completely move this. Just a receiver coil sits right here. Here's the earth ground. You can see that. It's the earth ground. Here's the receiver ball. Connect the earth ground back up. So, now I will show the output at this circuitry. So we're set to current DC amps, and there's no doubt that this is real pure DC. So we got power. 
like a lot of it. Our output is 4 amps DC. <coughs> input is 40 volts, 1.37 amps. Output is almost 4 amps. We'll go to voltage. Voltage is 67 volts. So, there can be no doubt that that output is absolutely over unity. So the way you calculate watt, uh, wattage, working wattage for DC, is you do voltage times current, which would be the wattage. And if you had AC, you'd do voltage times current times time. So, we're dealing with DC. We don't need to do anything more complicated than doing voltage times current, and that gives us output wattage, which is much greater than the input. Input, output, and we got juice. A lot of it. As you can see, it can run a halogen load, 150 watt. full intensity. Camera just has to adjust to it. And I'm afraid to turn the system up to 60 volts. The output would go up to um output would go up to the point where it almost blow that little board. So I can't crank it to its full potential. And it can run uh very bright lights. Here's an even brighter bulb I'll hook up. And that thing's throwing heat. Probably cook an egg off that. There we go. There's our raw DC output. Thing's getting hot. It's interesting to note while it's running that, I still get radiant energy effects just from the grounded receiver coil. So I figured I'd demonstrate that. I can even put this in a bucket of water and it lights up and I don't get zapped in any way because it's high frequency that's safe for humans. Touch this to anything metal nearby, it'll light up. Even my, uh, even these receivers that aren't being used. Even grounded wall switches. As you see, I can get that effect much brighter depending on tuning. very bright over here. Certain hot spots is where the energy will accumulate. <clears throat> so again, this is called the Mal Effect Generator because I created it. And I can improve this system much further. I can get a much bigger transistor. That's three times that size, which I'm close to doing. And it'll run half my room or half a house with this output. I just gotta upgrade the transistor size and upgrade that board size, which would be very inexpensive to do. And then this thing can pff, run anything. You go to a 12 volt to a 120 volt AC system, and you're golden. Again, here's the output current reading. Shit, that's intense. These sparks are uh, much louder and brighter in person. Like that's, that's some real power. It's a lot of juice. It's maybe a 400 watt output. I'm horrible at mental math. I use advanced calculators for everything. Algebra calculators, electrical resonance calculators, you name it. And again, I can get an even higher output if I come straight off the rectifier. 
I'm just going through this board, so it completely proves the overunity. There can be no doubt that the diodes aren't rectifying the current properly. This is an RF to DC conversion board that works up to 20 megahertz, so there is no doubt the output is raw DC that can run loads. And that's like three times over unity right here. It can run motors. Shit. Now do this one hand. Damn, I can't do it one handed. I'm going to shut it off and have to start it. Hopefully it'll still start. There we go. That's a lot of power. Pushing my cat off. We have takeoff. You got pure DC juice. Now I will show the output coming off of just the rectifiers. No, con no uh, RF to DC conversion board. I'll disconnect this guy. Move him up here. Grab whatever I dropped. Show the output. As you can see, it's literally just rectifier that comes off of the L1. And I have this sitting in just a little bucket of water to keep it cool. It doesn't need the water, but I was doing high power testing, so I had it just to keep it cool. <clears throat> and I'll show you the raw output of just the rectifier. So, here we go. That's the raw output of the rectifier. 5 amps. Even if it's wrong, even if I'm wrong, and that output isn't fully accurate, it's still way over unity. Here's the voltage. Sixty five volts DC at five amps. And when I run it on this, since I'm not using the conversion board, the RF to DC, I can really crank it and show you what it can do. Interesting the sparks are almost gone without the uh, RF to DC board. The sparks almost go away, but the power is still there, which is really interesting. And this, this type of power can still do real usable work. That's very bright. So load not connected. That's how much power we consume. Load connected. Looks like it's full intensity. And it only costs us what, uh, four or five hundred milliamps? There's a lot more than four or five hundred milliamps flowing through that light. Like you could cook an egg on that. And the more you turn it up, the more efficient it gets. That's bright. And we still maintain the radiant energy effects. They're even brighter now. So that's the over unity output. There can be no doubt. And I did things with this system that will absolutely blow your mind that I'm hesitant to share. 
on the videos because I should be selling all this information for a lot of money. So. Anyway, that's about all I wanted to show. And I'll show you how efficient this is without running the halogen. When you take, when you tap off the over unity output here, it'll add about a 30% increase to your power draw. So I'll shut that off. Remove. And these wires are getting so hot they almost feel kind of gooey. So I'll remove the rectifier and it's just the AC side that connects to the L1 and if you want to look in here you absolutely can it's just nothing to it it's just a receiver coil I mean this is the transmitter that's the receiver there's nothing under the desk I'll turn it on we're not using the voltmeter anymore. I'll get that out of the way. I'll show you what we can do. 60 volts. And if I ran this at 120 volts DC or 200 volts DC, the radiant energy effects would probably become so extreme that they themselves would be over unity. So let that sink in. And I got th these to light up with a coil, a tuned coil, up into my work shed, which is 500 feet away to full brightness. And I'll be showing that soon in a video. Oh, the interesting thing to note is when I take the ground wire, it'll short out very brightly to the receiver. Like, look at all that power. That's probably over unity there, too. Oh yeah, and if I remove the ball for some reason, the arcs will get much bigger. Hopefully you can see that. There we go. It's melting the clip. Like that, that's what definitely over unity. Look at that, it's melting the metal. I'm melting the fucking metal. And part of the reason this works so good, this circuit, is I'm using non linear el electrical components. I am using non linear electrical components that are not subject to Ohm's law. I'm using RF components, avalanche diode components negative resistance components the earth itself and holy shit this is not an o this is not a closed system this is an open system that's why it can do what it's doing and that is melting good lord it's starting to stink holy shit Talking about summoning lightning from the ground. That is really hot. Anyway, I'll connect this to it. And doing that increases our radiant energy. And I'll show you some really mind blowing things. On the ground, it sink. Full brightness. Whoops, that would have been bad. Rounded wall outlet. The oven. The 
heel. Really loves this ground in here. Very bright. Something else that'll blow your mind. Wireless. Look at that. Right on the earth ground. Just figure I'd show that. And grounding that receiver coil greatly increases the effect. And it increases the radiant energy effect while decreasing the power going to the transmitter. Which is very interesting. So again, that's everything I wanted to show in this video. And if you want to donate to this research, feel free to. I have a GoFundMe link in my page's description. And I thank all those who are helping to research this. And it's been proven in labs around the world. It outputs over unity. They've confirmed it. So, thanks again to everyone, and hopefully, more improvements keep being made.